Welcome to the Transitions Daily Podcast. Transitions Daily is an online recovery group that offers a daily distribution of popular recovery resources accompanied by a secret Facebook group for discussion. We hope you enjoy today's readings. This is Transitions Daily for August 15th, read by Kirsty S. from the East Midlands in the United Kingdom. AA thoughts for the day. Defiance. As psychiatrists have often observed, defiance is the outstanding characteristic of many an alcoholic. When we encountered AA, the fallacy of our defiance was revealed. At no time had we asked what God's will was for us. Instead, we had been telling him what it ought to be. No man we saw could believe in God and defy him too. Belief meant reliance, not defiance. In AA, we saw the fruits of this belief. Men and women spared from alcohol's final catastrophe. Twelve Steps and Twelve Traditions, page 31. Thought to consider. God wants spiritual fruit, not religious nuts. Acronyms. Big Book. Believing in God beats our old knowledge. Just for today. The Paradoxes. From The Professor and the Paradox. 1. We surrender to win. On the face of it, surrendering certainly does not seem like winning, but it is in AA. Only after we have come to the end of our rope, hit a stone wall in some aspect of our lives beyond which we can go no further. Only when we hit bottom in despair and surrender can we accomplish sobriety, which we can never accomplish before. We must and we do surrender in order to win. We give away to keep. That seems absurd and untrue. How can you keep anything if you give it away? But in order to keep whatever it is we get in AA, we must go about giving it away to others for no fees or rewards of any kind. When we cannot afford to give it away, what we have received so freely in AA, we had better get ready for our next drunk. It will happen every time. We've got to continue to give it away in order to keep it. 3. We suffer to get well. There is no way to escape the terrible suffering of remorse and regret and shame and embarrassment which starts us on the road to getting well from our affliction. There is no new way to shake out a hangover. It's painful, and for us necessarily so. I told this to a friend of mine as he sat weaving to and fro on the side of the bed, in terrible shape, about to die for some paraldehyde. I said, Lost John, that's his nickname, Lost John, You know you're going to have to do a certain amount of shaking sooner or later. Well, he said, for God's sake, let's make it later. We suffer to get well. 4. We die to live. That is a beautiful paradox straight out of the biblical idea of being born again or losing one's life to find it. When we work at our 12 steps, the old life of guzzling and fuzzy thinking and all that goes with it gradually dies, and we acquire a different and a better way of life. As our shortcomings are removed, one life of us dies, and another life of us lives. We in AA die to live. Experience, strength and hope. Pages 155 and 156. Daily Reflections Didn't we hurt anybody? Some of us, though, tripped over a very different snag. We clung to the claim that when drinking we never hurt anybody but ourselves. Twelve Steps and Twelve Traditions, page 79. This step seemed so simple. I identified several people whom I had tarned, but they were no longer available. Still, I was uneasy about the step and avoided conversations dealing with it. In time, I learned to investigate those steps in areas of my life which made me uncomfortable. My search revealed my parents who had been deeply hurt by my isolation from them, my employer, who worried about my absences, my memory lapses, my temper, and the friends I had shunned without explanation. As I faced the reality of the harm I had done, step eight took on a new meaning. I am no longer uncomfortable, and I feel clean and light. As Bill sees it. Is sobriety enough? The alcoholic is like a tornado roaring his way through the lives of others. Hearts are broken, sweet relationships are dead, affections have been uprooted, selfish and inconsiderate habits have kept the home in turmoil. 
We feel a man is unthinking when he says that sobriety is enough. He is like the farmer who came up out of his cyclone cellar to find his home ruined. To his wife, he remarked, don't see anything the matter here, Ma. Ain't it grand the wind stopped blowing? We ask ourselves what we mean when we say that we have harmed other people. What kinds of harm do people do one another anyway? To define the word harm in a practical way, we might call it the result of instincts and collision which cause physical, mental, emotion or spiritual damage to those about us. Alcoholics Anonymous, page 82, 12 and 12, page 80. Big book quote. We then look at step six. We have emphasised willingness and being indispensable. Are we now ready to let God remove from us all the things which we have admitted are objectionable? Can he now take them all, every one? If we still cling to something we will not let go, we ask God to help us to be willing. Into Action, page 76. 24 hours a day. AA thought for the day. Once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic. Commencing to drink after a period of sobriety, we are in a short time as bad as ever. If we have admitted we are alcoholics, we must have no reservations of any kind nor any lurking notion that some day we will be immune to alcohol. What sort of thinking dominates an alcoholic who repeats time after time the desperate experiment of the first drink? Parallel with sound reasoning, there inevitably runs some insanely trivial excuse for taking the first drink. There is little thought of what the terrific consequences may be. Have I given up all excuses for taking the drink? Meditation for the day. Where two or three people are banded together, I will be there in the midst of them. When God finds two or three people in union, who only want his will to be done, who want only to serve him, he has a plan that can be revealed to them. The grace of God can come to people who are together in one place with one accord. A union like this is miracle working. God is able to use such people. Only good come through such consecrated people brought together in unified groups for a single purpose and of a single mind. Prayer for the day. I pray that I may be part of a unified group. I pray that I may contribute my share to its consecrated purpose. Hazelden Foundation, PO Box 176, Centre City, MN 55012. My name is Kirsty, and I'm an alcoholic. We hope you enjoy today's readings. You can also receive Transitions Daily via email and discuss today's readings in our secret Facebook group. So for more information, go to dailyaaemails.com today. Other than the 24 hours a day reading, unless otherwise specified, all quotes copyright Alcoholics Anonymous World Services, Inc. 1952, 1957, 1967, 1973, 1975, 1976, 1980, 1981, 1984, 1985, 1988, 1990, or 2001.